defensively, some of the stats are are pretty underwhelming. Not to to start on a on a negative note, but particularly Leinster is a surprise for me. Like they're they're ranked bottom in the competition for tackle success, which was hugely surprising for me. But um, the other side of of the ball ranked second for try scored. I think they've got eighteen in total across the first four games. <clears throat> I kind of ruled out the opening game as a lot of analysts tend to do in the opening rounds of competitions, you give players and teams a little bit of leeway to to try and start the rhythm. But yeah, for me, Leicester's attack still humming. They don't seem to be overly missing the um, the Stuart Lancaster influence. Obviously, he's, he's left a pretty significant DNA in terms of his coaching over over the last number of seasons. But yeah, the stand-up moment was probably the the Frawley try against the Dragons for me, the uh, the double effort of of Sheehan, wasn't it? The the big hit off first phase defense, forcing the turnover, getting that um <clears throat> offload away, uh, which is one of his real skills. And then the work rate, which like we've associated with with Irish teams is their capacity to to go again and get back in the game, back up effort upon effort. And his uh, his work rate to get off the ground and work to that far right side to to connect with uh, Kieran Frawley for that lovely little one-two for the try was was significant. That it was yeah an excellent moment. And good to see him kind of hitting the ground running as in a kind of new leadership role, which will be I'm sure relatively new to him. And probably the other standout is I guess the evolution of Jamie Osborne and just good to see him getting more game time. Not coming up with the the line breaks or the tries, but I think he's he's ranked fifth in the URC for for all offloads. Um, with, with four offloads in the opening few games. So, yeah, exciting to see his kind of um, evolution as the season goes on. So, like, how much credence would you actually put in that specific stat tackle success rate? Yeah, it's pretty subject, subjective, isn't it? The individual one-on-one miss versus the the system outcome and being able to push guys back to the inside and denying them space on the edge, things like that. But I think if you look at the, the correlation of tackle success, in the business end of the Rugby World Cup, more often than not, the team that won the game had a better tackle success than the opposition. So, yes, I understand it's not a direct correlation to a successful defensive system, but I think if you're providing teams with momentum in the games by like tacking on miss tackle after miss tackle, and you're in the in the high eighties or even mid eighty percent, then you're you're providing teams, particularly business end of the competition, I think you're providing teams with some momentum. So um, not a direct correlation, but as I said, if you look at the the business end of the World Cup, teams with the higher tackle success generally won the games. What are you most looking forward to about Jack Nienaber's introduction to this Leinster environment, though? Mm. I think the attack is so well regarded and much admired globally, isn't it, in terms of I think a lot of teams are copying and pasting what Leicester do now. The, the shape is kind of very similar across a lot of competitions. So I think they've definitely been the, at the forefront from that perspective. I think probably the little one presenters, isn't it? And, and defence wins competitions. It's so often talked about. And, and potentially it's been a missing ingredient from Leicester just not getting over the line in those those big occasions, particularly the the back to back losses against La Rochelle when they particularly la- this season and sorry last season and the Aviva when they got off to such a hot start from an attacking perspective was almost the perfect first quarter of a European Cup final you could wish for, and then probably yes, there's definitely some there has been some sting in Leinster's defence. There is line speed, it is aggressive, but I think what you've seen with Jack Nienabar, what he's delivered from a a Springbok perspective is just absolutely denying attacks the opportunity to get into any rhythm given their line speed they deny you access to the edges there's a huge amount of work rate involved like uh, like murray touched on in the podcast as well and, and birch as well just around the 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 work rate for each other even with that line speed the guys hunting hustle on the inside recovering the space if, if opposition do access the edges it's Phenomenal. So I think that side of things, when you think how close Leinster have come to to trophies over the last 24 months, that uh, he could definitely be the missing ingredient. 